I'm going to invite you to take a seat and uh, to grab your Bibles or your Bible app and turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12 is where we're going to be uh, tonight. If you don't have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your device, that's fine. Grab one of the the Bibles in the seats around you. Turn to page 1036 and you will find our text, Luke chapter 12, beginning at verse 35. And as always, if you're here and you don't have a Bible and you want one, please take one of these with you. We want you to have the Word of God and read the Word of God because uh, we know if you do that, God will change your life. Now, uh, before we dive into the message, I just want to tell you about one thing that's near and dear to my heart, uh, and that's this thing called uh, a tax credit that you can give uh, a portion of your state tax dollars. If you pay state tax dollars in Arizona, then you can designate part of that to bless schools, specifically Christian schools, specifically Calvary Calvary Christian Academy, our school, and the students who go there. And if you don't know about this, then please grab one of these on your way out. They're by the Connection Centers and read about this. It doesn't cost you a dime. It it is not anything that you have to pay. It is simply a way for you to ask the state, hey, take some of my tax dollars that, that I'm paying you anyway and designate it to bless Calvary Christian Academy. And they will do it through this organization called ACSTO. It's an amazing tax break that Arizona has. Now, this is not in competition with the public school tax credits that you can use for extracurricular. This is an addition to it. So uh, if, you know, when you go to the tax guy, please ask about this. By the way, you don't have to, you know, make the donation before the 31st. It doesn't have to be the end of this year. You have all the way till April 15th to do that. So I just want you to be aware of it as you start heading into tax season and start thinking about that, that this is a, a way that you can use your tax dollars to bless people in the name of Jesus. That is cool. That is an opportunity that none of us should miss if we're having to pay taxes. Oh, excuse me, if we're getting to pay taxes. Uh, uh, well, I mean, if you're getting to pay taxes, it means you've got an income, so that's a good thing, I guess. So uh, uh, anyway, hey, uh, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for 2019? Because it's just a couple days away. I mean, New Year's Eve is Monday, and uh, it, it's, you know, so New Year's is coming. So, you know, boys and girls, you know what that means? That means you have to start writing 2019 on your papers now. You got to be ready for that. When you're, you know, putting the date on your paper, you got to change the year. Uh, if you still wrote checks, you would have to do that too on your checks, right? Because uh, we don't write checks anymore. But uh, so today we're addressing the subject of readiness. Readiness. Are you ready? So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play a game to start, and I've got a couple of volunteers already. So if my volunteers could kind of come up here, where are my volunteers at? Okay, come on up. Come on around this way. We're going to do it on this side because there's less stuff to ruin over here. Uh, So all these guitars I I like that I don't think I want to break. Okay, that's one. There were two. I was talking. Come on. Come on up. Come on up. So your name is? Jamie. Jamie. All right, Jamie. And you are? Travis. Come on over here by Jamie. Because I'm, I'm, you guys are going to be over here. This is going to be really, really simple, okay? And, and because, uh, you know, do you, have you guys ever seen what happens when they commemorate the new year in Times Square? Yeah. What happens? The ball, the ball drops. So we're going to play the ball drop game, okay? <laughs> so, uh, Travis, I want you to stand right over here. I want you to look at me, and Jamie's going to look at me. And what's going to happen is I'm going to throw balls at you. Well, I'm going to toss them to you, okay? Kind of, sort of. But I'm not really going to tell you. So it might just be that I'm talking and I just go like that. Okay, see? And here you go. Toss it back. Thank you. And, uh, but I'm not going to tell you when. Or, and they're different sizes. And some of them are like bean bags, And they could just like come your way. <laughs> they could just like come your way. Okay, so now we're starting the game. Because if it comes your way and you drop it, it's over. The year's over. The game's over. You lose. Is that fair? Okay. So you just don't know, oh, seriously? That was like the shortest game ever. I mean, should we just like try it again? So, okay, so here. (laughs) Hey, you know what, these are, they're really good, aren't they? So I think they're both gonna win. And so here's some gift certificates to Megan and Ice Water, Megan and Eric's Water and Ice. So it's freezing on the outside. You might as well go ahead and freeze your insides too, right? (laughs) Way to go. Happy New Year, and thanks for helping me out. (laughs) Thanks for not dropping more of them. (laughs) Uh, uh, So uh, Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 40, is really a 
statement from Jesus asking the question, are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, Jesus says, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, the master will dress himself for service and have the servants recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Jesus wants his followers to be ready. He wants his followers to be ready. Uh, th this story that Jesus is telling is trying to say to them, look, you know, and by the way, we don't, we don't have the same expectations, but if you went out to a wedding feast, uh, the master of the house went to this party, and he comes back from the party, and he's expecting his servants to let him into the gated compound. Okay, the servants are there waiting for him to return. When they get back, they open the door, they welcome him in, and he's saying, look, at whatever time he shows up, whether it's, you know, late in the evening or crazy hours in the morning or whatever he shows up, if he finds the servants ready, he is going to bless those servants. He's going to serve those servants. He's going to take care of those servants. He's going to honor those servants when he finds them ready. And, and Jesus is saying, look, if you're my servants, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus, then Jesus is saying, look, I expect my followers to be ready. To be ready for me. To be ready for uh, service. He, he wants his followers to be doing his will, obeying his directions, living out the mission. Because Jesus is the master in the story and he is coming again. Now, I don't know if you really believe that, but it's part of the essential doctrines here at Calvary. We believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross to pay for our sins, was raised from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is coming again to judge the living and the dead. In other words, part of the biblical belief system uh, uh, in Jesus is that he's the King of kings, Lord of lords, and he is going to conclude history as we know it one day. Here's the catch. We don't know that day. You and I don't know that day. He, he tells us that over and over and over again in Scripture, by the way. And I know some people love to study it and try to figure out when it's going to happen. And, and Jesus never tells us to do that. Do you know what Jesus tells us to do? Be ready. Yeah, to be ready, to be faithful, to be involved, to be serving, to be accountable to the Master for our actions. Because if we are found faithful, if we are ready, Jesus will reward us. I think that's pretty cool. So again, are you ready? See, we ask all the time around New Year's, are you ready for the new year? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? And, and, and it's a great question to ask. But are you ready? Are you ready for change? Are you ready for change? Because we can't follow Jesus and stay the same. I mean, change is built into following Jesus. And, and change... I don't know if you've noticed this or not, is also a part of life. See, if, if I was doing the sit-down game with you guys, what I'd say is sit down if you remember having to dial a phone, <laughs> right? Some of you remember, you know, using a phone where you had to actually talk to an operator to get a line. I am not that old. Uh, <laughs> You know, or sit down if you remember having to get up to change the channel to one of the other two or three. Right? I, I mean, see, I, I don't know if you guys notice this, the world has changed quite a bit, you know, and it's still changing. I mean, you got smartphones that have more computing capability than the Apollo 11 mission that went to the, to the moon. I, I mean, it's crazy when you think about it. So the world is changing, and guess what? It's part of life, and so change is coming. This coming year is going to find changes in your health, hopefully positive changes. It's going to find changes in your financial situation. Again, hopefully to the positive. 
There's going to be changes in your job or your business, changes to your status, changes in your family, maybe in your location. And yes, there's going to be changes to your church. See, change is one of our core values here at Calvary because you can't follow Jesus and stay the same. Uh, and I know you heard this, and you've heard it before, and I'm going to keep saying it. New in 2019, beginning next weekend, we are launching campuses in Parker, 11 o'clock at the high school, and at the McCulloch campus, Calvary Unplugged is going to be there at 9.30 and 11. And by the way, Joseph, who led tonight, is the worship leader, primary worship leader over at the McCulloch campus. And, and we need people to go there and, and open up seats here, and, and that's the purpose. And we're making these changes because our mission is to lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ through the love of his people and the power of his truth. And it's kind of hard for people to hear the truth if there's not a place for them to sit. And so we're making these changes, and, and guess what? We're making them for the right reason because we want to honor Jesus. We want to be faithful to be involved in the mission until the day he comes back. And uh, some of you will love these changes, and some of you will not. I just acknowledge it right now. Some of you are going to go, oh, I miss my friends. Where are they? Oh, they're over at McCulloch Campus. Or, oh, they're serving down in Parker. And you'll kind of go, oh, it's all right. You have permission and blessing to feel that way. Sometimes I'll feel that way because our staff is scattered on three campuses starting next week. And, and it's a lot more work, but you know what? It's for a great reason. It's for the mission of Christ, and when he shows back up, uh, we want to be serving. We want to be faithful. Now, see, the best changes are the ones that God leads you to make. You know, changes to your character, changes to your habits, changes to your attitudes that glorify God. So what is one change in 2019 that you would like to see happen in your life? Uh, don't tell me. Tell the person sitting around you. Ready, set, go. You have a few seconds to do this. What's a change you'd like to see happen in 2019? Talk to each other, not look at me. Some of you are staring at me. There's people around you. Go ahead and talk to them. It's okay. Okay, how many of you just heard somebody say, I want to win the lottery? Okay, nobody, nobody did that. Wait, wait, way to go. Or you guys are just like, no, we're already sitting down. We don't have to do that now. See, talk about that. Some of you are like, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. But think about it. Pray about it. Say, God, what is something you want to change in my life this coming year? And then here's the thing. What are you going to do to make it happen? I'll tell you one of the things that's on my heart, because there's lots of stuff in my heart besides, you know, starting new campuses and launching these new campuses. That's been on my heart for a long time. Uh, and, and as we've seen this day coming, we've been getting ready for it. Uh, but once we get those up and running, I just really have this burden to try and help the churches that are floundering, that are struggling, uh, to get healthier and to get effective in reaching their communities. All over the state, uh, there, are, there are churches that we're affiliated with that are, are not baptizing anybody in a whole year, that are not reaching anybody in a whole year. Uh, and, and I just have this burden to help them. I'd love to start a ministry that can help uh, them get healthier and get better so that they can lead more people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, so you've got to be thinking about what is it that God wants to change in your life? And are you ready for the change? And then are you ready for the challenges? Are you ready for the challenges? We talk about challenges. We can talk about trials, tribulations, suffering, because all of those are part of this broken world that we live in. By the way, that's why Scripture speaks to this subject so often. Like James chapter 1, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials. What? Consider it joy when I encounter various trials. Why? Because the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result that you might be mature and complete, lacking nothing. God has a process. He's going to take these challenges in your life, and he's going to use them to mature you, to grow you up in your faith. I think that's kind of cool. Or how about when... Uh, when Jesus said, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Huh. That's a nice promise, isn't it? Why do we skip that one about Jesus? What are Jesus' promises? You're going to have tribulation. There it is. But take courage. This is what he says. In the world you'll have tribulation, but take courage. Don't be afraid, because I have overcome the world. So, so we need to walk into this new year with that understanding, hey, we got challenges ahead of us, but it's okay. 
because we're Jesus people and Jesus has overcome the world. So we don't have to be afraid of them. We don't have to fear them. We don't have to cower before them. But are you ready for the challenges? Are you ready for the challenges to your faith? To your faith. You know, the assault on Jesus and on Christians in the public square is going to continue and it's going to intensify. Can, can I just promise you that? Things are not going to go back to how they were and it's not going to really get better. Uh, there's just this movement and, and that's the direction our culture is going. So are you going to hold on to your faith and identify as a follower of Jesus even when it costs you? Because it will cost you at some point. And it's going to cost the church at some point. And it's going to cost those who are committed to Jesus at some point. Uh, and, and if that bothers you, just remember that Jesus actually said in John 16, don't be surprised when the world hates you. It hated me first. He said it hated me. If, it, if the world, you know, hated me, then why wouldn't it hate you? Unless, of course, you're of the world and not of Jesus. So are you ready for the challenges to your faith? Are you ready for the challenges to your family? You know, uh, Satan wants to steal and kill and destroy. And one of the things he wants to destroy is your family. He really does. See, family is a blessing from God. God's the one who created it. God's the who, who, one who said, hey, I want you to, to build this family, and I want you to bless your kids, and I want you to have this place that, that raises them in the fear and admonition of the Lord, just like we celebrated a few minutes ago. And, and so Satan wants to destroy your family, and he's going to do it somehow he's going to try and tempt you you know with adultery he's going to try and tempt you with addiction he's going to try and tempt you with just basic selfishness because that's what the biggest destroyer of marriages is do, do, are you aware that that is coming at you that if you're in a relationship that is trying to honor god then you are a target because satan wants to destroy your family are you ready for those temptations are you ready for those challenges and if you have children at home, are you ready for the challenges that face you as a parent? I mean, the challenge is to be present with them, to make time to be with them and not just their chauffeur. The challenge is to be involved in their lives, to understand what's going on and to have this conversation with them, to be involved in their community. The challenge is to be encouraging while providing discipline. It needs to be both and. You see, I don't know if you realize this, parents and, and grandparents, but the, the secular culture is uh, zealously evangelistic toward your children. They want to win them over. They want to destroy their faith. They want to bring them into their fold and adopt their worldview. And, and, and if you just act like it's no big deal, the world will win. And yet God has entrusted you with your children. And if you've got influence in your children's lives or your grandchildren's lives, then, you know, it's our responsibility as Christian parents and grandparents to promote Christ and to protect our kids and our grandkids. Are you ready for the challenges? Because they're coming. There's a lot more challenges, but you get the idea. You need to be ready for the challenges. You need to be ready for the change. Are you ready to commit? Are you ready to commit? You know, Jesus never hesitates to ask for 100% commitment. 100% commitment is what he wants. Luke 9, 23, Jesus said to everyone, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Okay, that's 100%. Because what he's saying is, I want you to be willing to lay down your life to follow me. I want you all in. I don't want a part-time commitment. I don't want a halfway commitment. There, look, people, there is not a trial-sized Jesus available for you. He wants everything. I mean, in Luke 12, we just read this. Jesus says, I want you to be ready. You can't be ready being a part-time follower of Jesus. You can't be ready if your Jesus is trial size. If you can put him away and go on with your life your way and then take him out uh, when it's convenient. And by the way, if you keep reading Luke 12 from where I stopped, it gets really unpleasant for those who are unprepared. Really unpleasant. You ought to go home and read that uh, and, and if you're not already ready. So here's the thing. Are you ready to commit? Are you ready to commit to Jesus? 
there's some of you who are here and you've never made that first time absolute commitment saying I am a follower of Jesus and my life is his and, and I'm going to declare that faith in baptism because I want the world to know that I am an unashamed, uh, unhesitant, fully committed follower of Jesus Christ. And you've been sitting there kind of like in that safe zone, kind of straddling the fence place, kind of holding back, going, yeah, I kind of want to commit, kind of don't. Look, are you ready to commit? Because like I said, you know, Jesus doesn't want a part-time follower. It's all or nothing. And when you fully commit to Jesus Christ, he changes your life. It's an awesome thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's what... All these parents up here are praying for their kids every single day because they want their children to be fully committed to Jesus Christ. Only they can't choose for them. They can only choose for themselves. And you can't choose for your friends. You can't choose for your family. You can only choose for yourself. Are you all in? And those of you that are already followers of Christ, are you ready to commit to follow Jesus every day? Every day. Jesus kind of said, you know, deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow me. So are you ready to commit to Jesus as a priority in your life? A priority. That means he's more important. Are you ready to commit to read your Bible? Yeah, we talk about this all the time. I started off the service by, by telling you, you can take these with you because we want you to read them because if you read the Bible, God will change your life. And this is a time of year when a lot of people are like, I'm going to read the Bible through this year. I'm going to get on a Bible reading plan, and I'm going to do that. And, and a lot of you are, are committed to doing that until you get to Leviticus. <laughs> and at Leviticus, you're like, oh, my gosh, are they going to repeat this again? And then if you survive Leviticus, you know what's next? Numbers. <laughs> it does not get any better. So here, I'm going to – let me, can I – I mean, if, if you're, if you're a, I read the Bible every year thing, uh, great. But let me just challenge us, all of us, okay? Even if you've never read the Bible regularly or whatever, here's a challenge I think you can, you can step up to. And so I'm going to challenge everybody in this church to read the New Testament this year. The New Testament, okay? It starts at Matthew. That's the beginning of the New Testament. goes through Revelation. And here's why. There's 260 chapters in the New Testament. If you read one chapter a day, one chapter a day. Any slackard can do that. <laughs> okay? I'm just telling you. It's, we're talking five minutes, ten if you're a slow reader. Okay? One chapter a day, you've read the entire New Testament by September 19th. Okay? I think you do it. By the way, if you only read five chapters a week, you take two days off because you're tired. <laughs> You'll read the entire New Testament in 2019. It'll take you 52 weeks. Now, I think we can do that. I think you can do that. And if you want to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts, and all, do it that way, that's fine. If you want to like, read one of the Gospels and then read, you know, uh, you know, Romans and then read, you know, Mark and then read, you know, 1 Corinthians, you know, you want to bounce back and forth, that's fine. I don't care how you do it. Just read a chapter a day of the New Testament until you read the whole New Testament this year. Let God speak to you. Let him teach you. Let him change your life. Are you committed to doing that? Are you committed to pray regularly? Are you committed to serve with joy, whether it's weekly or whether it's special events or whether it's, you know, on a mission trip? doesn't matter. Are you committed to invite your unchurched friends? Look, we're making all these changes in the church so that you can invite your friends who don't know Jesus, who are far from God, and bring them here and have a place for them to sit, a place for them to park, and a place for them to learn. We're doing it for you. Not for us. We're doing it for you and for the kingdom of God. But it only works if you guys say, hey, you know what? I know somebody who needs God. I know somebody who needs to experience a life-changing relationship with Jesus. I'm going to invite them. Are you committed to be the man or woman, the husband or wife, the mom or dad, the son or daughter that God created you to be? Jesus is calling us. Jesus warned us to be ready. So are you ready? Or will you drop the ball? I pray that you're ready. Let's pray together.